impossible fantasy. But one man's vision was to change France forever. Pierre Boulanger, a chain-smoking architect and aviator, had spotted a market niche for a simple and hardy people's car. A car to ferry pigs to market on Saturday and the farmer and his family to mass on Sunday. Boulanger canvassed the opinions of 10,000 people on what they wanted in a motor car. They asked for a toute petite voiture, a very small car that could carry two farmers wearing hats with 110 pounds of potatoes, do 37 miles an hour and return 90 miles to the gallon. The suspension had to be so yielding that it could carry a basket of eggs across a ploughed field without breaking a single one. Most important of all, it should be simple enough to be mended by a shepherdess and last for at least 20 years. And lasted it has. Four decades later and the 2CV is still with us, alive and well. It might be the world's most maligned and misunderstood motor car, but as far as I'm concerned, these are dead good. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this man's a fool. But you like your Philistines slumped there in your dray long sofas. I bet you've never even sat in a 2CV, let alone driven one. Well, there you are. Settle down because you're going to learn something. In the next 20 minutes, I am going to convince you that this gawky, clumsy little car isn't just good. It is one of the world's truly great cars. <laughs> completely reliable, it's been my best friend, and it's also looked after me. People stare driving down the motorway, people are always looking, it's brilliant, I love being looked at. Now, as a police inspector, it was a, a means of therapy, really, and I think they should be available on National Health. Well, it has been designed by Sculptor, it's, it's a piece of art. But you see the, uh, it's something that lives, you know, it's not an object. <laughs> The first clumsy prototype rattled off the production line in 1939. It had just one headlight, a ridged bonnet, a roll-back canvas roof, a thoroughly modern lightweight magnesium alloy chassis, specially designed Michelin radials and plastic rather than glass windows. Plus there was room enough to wear a hat and it boasted the world's most reliable windscreen wipers. But a disagreement with an invading Austrian called Adolf meant Citroen had to change their plans. To stop the project falling into the hands of the Germans, everything was scrapped except that first car. Thirteen years and much modification later, Citroen's mechanical mule was first unveiled at the 1948 Paris show. But ironically, the car for the masses could only be had by the few. Selling for just 225,000 francs or 300 pounds, demand was so great that priority was given to vets, doctors and farmers. Everybody else joined a six-year waiting list. Faced with something that looked like a flying washboard, the world didn't exactly fall about laughing, but reactions were mixed. The French loved it, but the British weren't so keen. Autocar magazine said that the designer has kissed the lash of austerity with a masochistic fervor. And whether the design of the 2CV will meet the demands of the average motorist is a debatable question. Today, that's a question that needs no debate. Here at the Design Museum in London, among the angle poised lamps, Barcelona chairs and round-shouldered frigidaires is our humble 2CV. Propped up on blocks like an art exhibit, it belongs here because it is the perfect example of the perfect design.
This little car has remained largely unchanged in form or function for the thick end of 40 years. How many other objects, let alone motor cars, can you say that about? Motorised transport in its purest form, the 2CV has no frills, no nonsense. Its design credo is simple. Less is most definitely more. Everything on the car is as simple as possible. I mean, like no boot. Why? Well, there is, the, there is a boot here. This canvas is part of the hood. It was a weight-saving consideration, but also it allowed the last half of the boot lid to be wound up, so a large plank could come out the back, or stove pipes, that sort of thing. And no fuel gauge either? No, there was no fuel gauge. Again, it would have been a, a simplicity. But there's a fibre stick, I think it was calibrated in, in litres there. Currently it's registering four litres of petrol. It can go up to 20 litres, that's the full mark. From what I understand, most Frenchmen will carry around an empty bottle of beer in the boot. In case they run out, a beer bottle will be enough to get you back home again afterwards. One of the greatest things about TCVs is that all the seats come out for picnics. But, I mean, there was a more serious reason, wasn't there? Yeah. It would be very easy to put a couple of male sheep in the back there, or possibly beer barrels or suddenly some, some hay or some goat's cheese or bottles of wine. And these mad windows, I mean, why? Just simply, the, the, there's only a hinge. There's no complicated winding mechanism. And the window just flaps down with gravity. So the French guy would be there with his elbow and his cigarette and driving along. And total simplicity. There's nothing to go wrong in the window. What about the engine? Yeah, this first engine is 375 cc's. Um, it's a twin cylinder. There's no water. No radiator. No, no there's no water radiator. Pump. There's an oil cooler radiator. And that's it. One carburetor, two spark plugs. Nothing at all that, that could break down. Undoubtedly, one of the best cars ever designed. Citroën knew that their new offering was no matinee idol, so with typical Gallic aplomb, they promoted it as a practical beast of burden. Radical change in the 2CV were never easy bedfellows, but in 1960 it did enjoy a mild facelift in the form of a redesigned bonnet plus a choice of two new engines, 435cc and a dizzy 602cc. Then there were modernities like electric windscreen wipers and luxury of luxuries, a fuel gauge. By the middle 60s, the tin snail had become a way of life. Catholic France approved of its wholesome good sense. These were the De Chavaux's halcyon days. Citroën was selling over 3,000 a week. After notching up a million 2CVs, Citroen tried to improve their pensionable prodigy with the more refined Ami 6 of 1961 and the hatchback Diane of 67. But neither outlived the car they were meant to replace. There was also the weird but very wonderful Mahari, a fiberglass 2CV-based Jeep which Bohemian France instantly embraced as their very own beach buggy. And from day one, the tin snail proved it could go almost anywhere. Two CVs crossed continents all over the world. Keen to grab all the publicity going, Citroen organized an international endurance event with ten brand new two CVs as prizes. A little jaunt round Africa. In 1973, sponsored by Radio Luxembourg and Total Oil, a hundred people driving 60 2CVs began the mammoth 5,000-mile trek from Paris to Tunis. After 34 days of the hardest driving imaginable, all 60 cars returned home intact. We did it once, we went to Morocco and then a week later we were up in Hamburg going into Denmark so it's Morocco at 45 degrees and then Denmark at minus 32 degrees no problems no problems in the 1970s the 2CV enjoyed a huge renaissance 
The petrol crisis of 1974 meant that frugal cars were good news, and suddenly it became fashionable. The De Chevaux was the essential accessory for the King's Road. Colour schemes got madder and madder as more and more people fell in love with Citroën's ugly duckling. There were beachcomber special editions, dollies, bamboos and spots. But most popular of all was the 30s throwback, the Charleston. If the Charleston gave the 2CV sex appeal, then the 007 Special Edition gave it street cred. Hurry! I'm afraid we're being our postcard. Excuse me. Take the low road. Not that low. You don't mind if I drive, do you? Every one of the three stunt cars used in For Your Eyes Only was crashed, thrashed, and thrashed. Yet after the cameras had stopped, each car still drove perfectly. Love a drive in the country, don't you? <laughs> Hold tight! In the 80s, the 2CV grew into something of a cult car. Europe fell in love big time. The biggest markets, apart from the French, were the Dutch, Belgians, Spanish, even the humorless Germans. A whole underworld of tin snail supporters did their thing. Everything from club meetings, 2CV jamborees, rallycross, even 24-hour 2CV racing. But of all the 2CV fanciers in all the world, ironically, it was the British who adored it most. The tortoise, as we know from our biology lessons, has no fan belt, no distributor, no water pump, and no radiator. This makes it one of the simplest of creatures, and therefore one of the most reliable. It just doesn't happen to be the swiftest. And it's an urban myth that 2CVs are driven by duds in caftans and open-toed sandals. Car Cognoscenti now consider it collectible. I've got various cars, for example, that 51 Chevy, which I bought because an aunt of mine had one when I was a child, and that's sentimental. The Fassel Vega HK500 behind is a pretty car, a fast car. Sterling Moss had one. I've always admired him. And then the Fassel 3 over there, which is a very rare French convertible, again, very pretty. But I think the 2CV belongs in the collection because. It's such a pure car. It's cute, it's comfortable, it's well-engineered, and it's a Citroen above all. In 1986, when motoring journalist Steve Cropley bought his, he reckoned it had hidden talents. I happened to run into a very good turbo engineer, a bloke called Richard Wilshire, who'd been involved in engineering other turbo systems. And together we planned the installation of a Garrett turbocharger on this car just to make it go a bit quicker. The performance bits are very easy to see. They're right on top of the engine. This bit here is the turbocharger. Breathes through an MGB carburetor and basically stuffs a load of gas into the engine. You get a 60% bigger bang. We managed to shave 14 seconds off the 0 to 60 time. It went from 34 seconds 0 to 60 to 20, which isn't amazingly quick, I'll give you, but it is a hell of a lot quicker than they used to be. And the car would do 87 miles an hour flat out, honest. But the greatest thing was you could be clamped to the tailgate of blokes in Volvo Estates, and they used to get very angry indeed, because they could not shake you off. They expected two CVs to fall away, and this one didn't. We decided to take the car out to Millbrook Test Track on a very hot summer's day to prove that it was as fast as we said it was. 
and it duly was, but unfortunately on the way back down the M1 towards London, it started to get very smoky indeed under the bonnet, and flames started to billow out from the car, and it conked out right on the entrance to Scratchwood Services. The ventilation pipes, which are made of cardboard inside, caught fire, ignited the fuel, and it was a very dangerous situation. I, I thought the whole jaunt was finished. I thought we had 200 quid's worth of scrap here. But Richard was much more determined. And here it is, 10 years later, still with a turbo engine, but with this black armband to, uh, to commemorate the, uh, the dreadful events of 1986. But two years on, the news would be even worse. The car company Citroen has announced that it's to stop making the famous 2CV at its Paris factory. The Citroen 2CV is dead. The last car rolled off the production line in Portugal on Friday. Publicly, Citroen claimed that the Greenies' favourite car wasn't that green at all and wouldn't meet new emission legislation. Privately, they confessed it was just too labour-intensive to produce. Nevertheless, for nearly 50 years, Citroen's corrugated quadruped has captivated over 4 million owners. It's still as much a part of French landscape as the boucherie and still possesses all those sensible, down-to-earth virtues. Plus, of course, it's a laugh a minute. In its own way, driving a 2CV can be as much fun as a Ferrari. You plunge away at this umbrella-shaped gear lever to keep the demented 602cc engine revving to the limit of acoustic pain. The all-independent suspension means you can hurl it into bends at death-defying angles, touching the tarmac with the door handles. As you're driving along, small children laugh and wave. Park it and people come up and want to pat it affectionately. Women want to take it home and love it and feed it Marmite. The 2CV does that rare thing. It makes people smile. Boom. Convinced yet? Well, you should be, because the 2CV belongs up there with the Volkswagen Beetle, the Model T Ford and the Morris Minor. But do you know what the oddest thing is? Despite now knowing what you know, you still won't go out and buy one, will you? You complain that today's cars are boring and they all look the same, yet here is something with more personality than Robin Williams. But you still wouldn't be seen dead in it, would you? To really appreciate, to really love these remarkable little cars, you have to have that commodity which is in such short supply these days, and that's imagination. The 2CV is for people with soul. Bye. 